bodies of drowned migrants are brought to the Tunisian shore. 82 people went missing when their boat sank on July 1st. Most have since been retrieved from the water dead. The migrants started their journey in war-torn Libya and drifted into Tunisian waters before sinking. One of the few survivors remembers how their calls for help went unanswered. We called the Europeans to pick us up in the water. Our boat was sinking, but they didn't answer our call. Operation Sophia, the European Union effort to curb migrant flows across the Mediterranean, stopped rescuing shipwrecked people in March. And Italy's populist government has shut ports to private rescue ships. The country's interior minister says this policy has been a success. Prevention is better than the cure, and therefore we're down from 80,000 arrivals in this period in 2017 to 17,000 last year and to just 3,000 this year. But private rescue organisations have been challenging Salvini's hardline approach. Carola Racchetta was arrested after she illegally docked the Sea Watch 3 at the Italian island of Lampedusa with 40 rescued migrants on board. In the long term, I hope that the EU will change its policy and that there will be a safe possibility for people, refugees in particular, to cross the oceans so that civil rescue will not be needed anymore. In the short term, however, we hope that the criminalization of rescuers will stop so that those who want to help the people in need are able to do so without any fear of risking time in jail. EU rescue operations were halted because the bloc was unable to agree on how to distribute migrants amongst the member states. So for now, the private rescue groups say, ships like the Sea Watch 3 are the best hope to save migrants' lives at sea. In that report, we heard Italian Interior Minister Matteo Salvini discussing how many migrants have arrived in Italy in recent years. Let's take a look now at the numbers across Europe. Fewer people are arriving in Europe by sea compared with the peak of the migration crisis in 2015. Even so, nearly 30,000 people arrived in the first half of this year. Now, these here are the three main sea routes to get to Europe, via Greece, via Spain, and finally through Italy and Malta. The number of people traveling from Turkey to Greece has also been falling, but it's still the most common route by sea. An increasing number of migrants are making the journey from Morocco to Spain, but it's still not considered a mass migration route. And relatively few migrants are traveling from Libya to Italy and Malta, just over 4,000 people. But for those who try it, this is the most dangerous route. More than 400 people have drowned this year. For more on this, we are joined now by Matteo Villa. He's a research fellow and migration specialist at the Italian Institute for International Political Studies in Milan. Now, Matteo, Operation Sofia, that's the EU's mission in the Mediterranean, it's still active, but it no longer undertakes these sea rescues. What exactly was behind that decision? Yeah, I mean, uh, the EU is starting to, you know, bring down all rescues, but actually it's gone on much more, much before than we, uh, uh, than, than we thought. Uh, for instance, the EU Sofia was meant to actually to tackle the trafficking business and smuggling business, so destroying boats, but clearly, given that there is an international duty to rescue people, then it should have rescued people. And it brought, actually, ashore to Italy, Malta, and other countries, more than 35,000 people. And that came, clearly, uh, into the crossfire of, uh, you know, the political backlash of bringing migrants ashore. Uh, so what happened? Uh, Sofia, yeah, it's been discontinued at sea. It only goes on at uh, uh, by air. But, uh, you know, the decision came in March this year. But the truth is, Sofia has not done a single rescue since uh, Mr. Salvini, uh, Prime Minister Salvini came to, um, to power in Italy. So since June last year, no rescues have been done by, na by any ship uh, in uh, Operation Sofia. So there's been quite, uh, you know, a, a consensus throughout Europe that uh, given the current situation in Italy, uh, Sofia should suspend operations even before then that it was uh, uh, politically sanctioned. 
Looks like we have a few problems with this. I think we apologize for that. But let's go back now to 2014. Since then, sea missions by the EU, by Italy, and by NGOs, they rescued tens of thousands of migrants, really saving a lot of lives. However, Italian Interior Minister Matteo Salvini says not making these rescues is actually saving lives. I mean, how do you square those two arguments? I mean, it's it's hard to say. It's true that uh, NGO operations, were they not at sea or not, or or were they uh, to do rescues, it doesn't appear to change much in terms of the risk of uh, of dying at sea. Uh, in the end, uh, the number of people that today in 2019 risk dying at sea in the Central Mediterranean route is has gone up to 88 percent. But it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it's just. And search and rescue operations being discontinued, that it's the cause. Uh, it went up to 8% before it was 2%, so it seems to be four times as deadly. But truth is, there's no precise, precise correlation between NGOs' activities and death. So, I mean, Salvini is not that, uh, uh, that wrong there. It's true that all search and rescue operations actually brought down the risk of death. And so, uh, that's it. Uh, it's not just NGOs and private rescuers. It's also private rescues that have been, uh, sorry, pu public rescues that have been discontinued that has brought up the risk of dying at sea. Matteo Villa from the Italian Institute for International Political Studies. Thank you very much.